Overwatch 2 is launching before the summer of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. So, that's a bit of a statement to make there, but that's based on information we've got within this article you guys can see on the screen from Dexerto. Now, this article, it's by Richard Lewis, and it is behind the scenes of Overwatch League, reactions to the lawsuit and the future of the league. But there are some key takeaways from this. We're going to go over the article. I think it's actually a pretty good article, but we're also going to focus on the fact that it looks like team owners have been putting pressure on Blizzard to give them information when the game is actually going to launch because, of course, we do kind of know that with no overlock... Well, there will be an Overwatch League in some sort of capacity next year, but it's not going to be the same Overwatch League we've got now because, frankly, it needs Overwatch 2 for people to be interested in it. Like, Overwatch League, it's a hard enough sell as it is right now. As great as I think it is, it's still difficult to get people sort of, like, hyped up for that. You need Overwatch 2 for it. So the team owners who own all of the Overwatch League teams, they want to know when Overwatch 2 comes out because then that's obviously going to push the league forward a little bit, or at least they hope. And in this um, article, um, we've got various sources coming forward from inside the Overwatch League uh, and from the teams and stuff uh, and are basically confirming uh, that we've got a release date that's going to be before summer 2022, which, if true, is very interesting because it means that probably we'll get a type of closed beta towards the end of this year, which I think would be pretty big news for Overwatch 2. Anyway, let's get stuck into this because there's a lot to go over in this article. So let's get, well, we're just going to read it. And when we find bits we want to discuss, we're going to break it down and go into detail. So sources have informed Dexerto that following the highly publicized lawsuit from the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, Activision Blizzard held a meeting with the Overwatch League owners. We've been told that the owners are becoming increasingly disaffected with the leadership decisions, the costs around running a franchise, and the lack of coherent plan for the future of the league that they hope will be bolstered by the release of Overwatch 2. And of course, it's not just the league, right? It's everything. Like, us as fans of the game are hoping Overwatch 2, like, re-injects life back into the game, right? So we've been without major updates for years. Overwatch 2 is hopefully the thing which will fix that, but we'll have to wait and see. July the 20th saw the DFEH file suit uh, file a suit against the game's developer after two and a half years of investigation into their workplace culture. With many credible allegations from sexual harassment and gender-based discrimination, the initial PR response from Activision was seen as a poor one, with Bobby Kotick later admitting it was tone deaf and prompted his staff protests and, uh, and it prompted staff protests uh, uh, and walkouts. Of course, this is stuff we've all covered on the channel in detail. So you guys are probably up to date with all of that stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, our sources inform us that even prior to the lawsuit and the loss of league sponsors, multiple team owners were dissatisfied with the direction the league was heading in and the delays to the release of Overwatch 2. We were already set to have talks with the league operations because a few of us have been looking at our options, one franchise owner told Dexerto. The timing of the lawsuit could have couldn't have been worse and it came out of nowhere uh, and this is this is a shot here of the uh, activision blizzard um it this is kind of like the entrance space like you walk into here in this little sort of desk here that's where you sort of check in and uh down in this sort of door here is the little blizzard museum museum and there's like a theater in there uh, i've actually been in the theater they did a thing for you remember Blackwatch, the Blackwatch retribution update that they kind of showed us that in there it was really cool but that that's actually kind of like the, the last major update the game really got. And that was, was that 2018, I want to say? Was that even 2017? No, it was 2018, right? I think 2018. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the lawsuit story was dominating the game's press and the blanket coverage prompted more whistleblowers to come forward. So it was against this backdrop, the owner's meeting took place on July the 23rd. Sources say the company's representatives wanted to tell league owners that the lawsuit contained false allegations and that they would be fighting against it. It was a few days after the lawsuit when we got together and it wasn't the usual people that we talked to. One source present during the call told us instead of League Ops, it was a legal representative from Activision and Brandon Snow, head of Activision Blizzard Esports. They flat out denied multiple claims in the lawsuit and told us that they'd be challenging it. Obviously, multiple representatives expressed their concerns about the nature of the lawsuit because no one wants to be associated with that type of thing. The way Brandon handled the call also left a bad taste in many of our mouths. He referenced his being on vacation multiple times during the call as if his inconvenience was somehow relevant in the context of the allegations and the pending lawsuit. I mean, that's shocking. That's absolutely shocking to read, that is. 
a company spokesperson for Activision Blizzard told Exerto, we hold regular schedule calls with team owners and talk about league matters and developments. Yep, they do. We told uh, we were told that discussions during the call included the problems facing the league now that the company was facing the likelihood of losing sponsors at a time when the league was already facing significant challenges. While the economics of the Overwatch League have had have improved significantly since the start, more and more owners are starting to be concerned over the lack of growth in viewership and revenue. While the league has monetized well historically, it really isn't in a place where it can afford to lose sponsorship dollars for other reasons. Obviously, those whose business is most reliant on Activision Blizzard uh, E, I guess that's Activision Blizzard Entertainment, maybe, I don't, the ABE anyway, properties were the most concerned. The source also confirmed that even prior to the lawsuit, many owners had been weighing up the potential of selling their franchise slots. With Activision having approval over slot sales and prospective buyers, many who no longer believe in that in the viability of the Overwatch League are lingering not through choice. The price that they would be compelled to sell at due to outstanding franchise fees is higher than most people's current valuation for a slot. However, the source thinks it's best for the future if Activision tries to find owners who haven't checked out. And I think you can, if you're a fan of Overwatch League, I think it's pretty obvious to see which teams have checked out. You know, you know, you only need to look at the bottom of the table and look at some of the teams that maybe in the past were performing quite well and they don't perform very well anymore. Um, not through the fault of the players and the staff that are involved currently, but it comes down to money in a lot of these sports. And yeah, you can you can very clearly see the teams that are, you know, they're just running on the, the most minimum budget to minimize losses. And is that the fault of the teams? Is that the fault of the league? You know, this gets into a very complex kind of argument. Anyway, let's move on. So if interested buyers for Overwatch League franchises exist, Activision Blizzard, oh, eSports, Activision Blizzard eSports, right? Yeah, <laughs> should do uh, anything they can to facilitate transactions to prove the liquidity exists. And there are still owners who remain bullish. Forget about the 10 million of paid in franchise fees and the outstanding obligations. Just getting transactions done at any price will be good for the league and the owners who wish to remain committed to Activision Blizzard Esports. The league has faced a series of challenges that have contributed to the view that it has failed to deliver on its early promise. At the start of 2020, Activision's deal for broadcasting rights with Amazon-owned streaming service Twitch ended, prompting a move to YouTube, which was packaged with a Call of Duty League and Hearthstone esports products. And, and it must be said, it that's not the main point of that deal. That deal is for a lot of cloud infrastructure that Blizzard used, so a lot of enterprise-level stuff, and even stuff that they're running their game. I don't necessarily think running their game servers on, but a lot of like global handling stuff is done through this deal. So it's more than just the the esports viewership. But that's you know that was part of the deal, right? The esports viewership measuring platform Esports Charge charts place this move as being a key factor in them experience a 61% decline in viewership for the 2020 Grand Finals. Uh, what I will say, and I've said this in various videos before, I think with Overwatch, when it comes to esports, when you look at, I, I like to look at it like a pyramid, right, guys? So at the bottom, you've kind of got us, yeah? We, you've got people who are just fans of the game. And then as you start going up, you maybe get like diehard competitive players. Then you've got maybe players that form their own teams and stuff like that. But in all of this, the sort of top of the pyramid of, of Overwatch, I guess, the experience of Overwatch, is Overwatch League. And it's always going to be smaller, the audience, as you reach the top of the pyramid and start going into esports and actually wanting to watch esports. So it's always going to be difficult if the game itself is suffering through lack of updates, lack of content. So there's less reason for people to play the game. And by extension, there's less reason for you to become invested in the esport. And it's kind of simple economics when you look at it that way. And that's one of the reasons I think it's really suffered. Um, I think that's the, the simplest explanation, really, in my point of view. Anyway, the global pandemic has also severely impacted plans for revenue generation around the league. The highly touted homestand model, which would see teams travel and compete at local venues in home and away fixtures, was shelved after a few test events as lockdowns and travel restrictions set in. In March 2021, the Activision Blizzard president of sports and entertainment, Tony Petiti, told the Sports Business Journal that they were going to become less dependent on live events, a decision that came with an estimated 50 layoffs from the company's esports team. Uh, and again, another an, uh, sad thing about this is I was quite heavily involved in the uh, London Spitfire homestands. There was going to be one in Birmingham and there was going to be one in London in Wembley Arena. And they were going to be really cool. 
And I remember receiving the call. I was actually out in LA at the time and I received the call and it was like, yeah, it's all cancelled. And I couldn't believe it. It was, yeah, it was. But anyway, that's happened now. It's gone, right? Things have got to change and they are starting to change. Anyway, franchise owners were already hurting financially with multiple franchise owners taking government PPP loans during the pandemic. Now, this, this I believe, is an American uh, government loan to keep your business running, I think. I don't know what the PPP stands for, but... Um, Sometimes businesses will just take this, even if they're not in trouble. Businesses like to make money. So it's like, a, it's a difficult thing to, I guess, like use as a, a measuring stick, like if these teams are suffering because everybody was sort of suffering, right? So I don't know. Although I do think some teams actually gave theirs back and some teams didn't even take them up in the first place. So yeah, you, maybe you can use it. Anyway, the loss of live events due to COVID-19 was a major change to Envy's 2020 business strategy, going from expected seven events hosted in North Texas to only the single events. A representative from Dallas Fuel told ESPN in another in another report in the Washington Post, the head of events at the Atlanta Rain franchise explained that their business model relied on hosting live events and that they were burning through everything right now with no help. So, okay, you can see some teams there were suffering from it. So it's, you know, it's perfectly a viable thing to say. And I guess as well, like uh, my understanding of this is, is kind of basic, but imagine the costs involved to like, so if you buy an Overwatch League franchise, then obviously you're paying all your players and your staff and your team. So it's expensive. But the way you're going to make your money back is holding a live event where you can sell tickets. But to do that, you need to hire an event space out, hire an event crew out. It's very expensive. And if you do all of that and then it gets cancelled, yeah, you might have insurance in place where you can recoup some of that. But a lot of the time, you probably don't, or it's going to be difficult to get most of it back, and you're just going to bleed money. Anyway, we are getting to the juicy bits in a, in a second, guys, but it's worth going through the Overwatch League stuff because it's how we get to the, the, the league that we've got right now. So uh, the lawsuit... Uh, I've missed, okay, okay, right, okay, cool. I thought I missed a bit out, but I haven't. <laughs> um, the lawsuit was going to further impact on the league's financial woes. On August the 5th, the Washington Post had confirmed that the that the fan noticed absence of certain sponsor logos on the broadcast was indeed a sign of their intention to pull out of the league altogether. Absent logos included Coca-Cola, State Farm and T-Mobile. On August 6th, Kellogg's com uh, confirmed they would no longer be sponsoring the league and explained their decision to the publication Polygon. We find these allegations troubling and inconsistent with our commitment to... I, 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 when I read this out the first time, it, it throws me off because I want to say equality, but it says equity. And I, equity, yeah, it still works, whatever. <laughs> equity, diversity, and inclusion. Their spokesperson, Chris Barner, said, while Activision Blizzard has announced plans to address the challenging issue it fa issues it faces, we will not be moving forward with any new programs this year, but will continue to review progress made against their plans. Now, there is also one thing to be said here as well when it comes down to sponsors. You may be looking for a get out. If you've invested a lot of money and you've maybe gone into like a five, six year deal, and you're in like the third year of your sponsorship or the fourth year of your sponsorship, and you're like, you know what? We're maybe not getting the returns that we'd like to see because of reasons I discussed earlier in the video. Things like Overwatch just isn't being updated. It's it's not like in the public it, it like sphere of influence it used to be. You know, it's it's declined. It needs that Overwatch 2 that's been delayed, you know, yada, 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 all of these things. It's a good excuse to get out. I'm not saying that's the only reason because, of course, what's gone on at Blizzard is horrifically bad. And that sponsors are well within their rights not to want to be connected to that anyway but it is still something where you could go you know what we can cut our losses get out of this and we can come back if the league picks up again with overwatch 2 right so and I, it just pure calculated business level of decision making it kind of makes sense right if you're not getting a return from it that is Two franchise sources have stated that following the news about sponsors, Activision Blizzard's representatives had told them that several sponsors weren't pulling out but were waiting for the environment to improve before allowing their logos to be used again. Both sources stated they hadn't been able to confirm if that was accurate or simply a reassurance tactic from league operations. For many franchisees, or franchises, <laughs> There were now two glimmers of hope. The first, obviously, was a return to normality once the pandemic restrictions could be lifted. The second was the release of Overwatch 2, which, according to the sources we spoke with, had become synonymous with a hard reset of the league and a potential resurgence of enthusiasm among fans for the IP. When rumours started to circulate that the game was going to face delays, the team owners wanted to know how long, realistically, that would be the case. On August the 7th, the reputed... 
Overwatch insider Metro spoke publicly about these rumors, stating that, from what I can gather, a release in 2020 does not seem likely anymore. Now, we've went, we've been over Metro before, and Metro can be right or horrifically wrong. And it, I don't want to say it's 50-50 with him. It's more like 60-40 with him, whether you're going to get it right or get it wrong. But that paragraph there sums it up beautifully, I think, to be honest. You know, Overwatch 2 is the hard reset the League needs. The League is not going to begin on Overwatch and then flip to Overwatch 2. It makes no sense. Also, think about the teams, right? Maybe they want to downsize their rosters because it's 5v5 now. It's not 6v6. I'm not saying teams will do that because it might actually still be beneficial to keep your rosters the size as they are because you can have special, you know, more specialized players in, in those roles instead of shrinking the rosters down. But again, we don't know. If these teams have suffered a lot of financial losses, maybe re reducing their roster size is going to help them out long term. It's not going to help the players out, though, so that those guys are not going to you know, do too well off it. That's, of course, if teams do downsize. But yeah, like this whole idea of it being a reset, being the thing which is going to re-energize the fan base, you know, it goes back to a video I made a, a while ago and I said, this is very risky because going dark for as long as they have and then putting everything on Overwatch 2's launch and everything on the game being able to capture its audience and grow again is very risky because if it doesn't work, we're just going to be left with a game that's sort of like, yeah, it's, it's going to be fine, but is it going to warrant investment from Blizzard to keep developing that game? So it's very risky. It's going to be on Blizzard to deliver a, a fantastic game for us to to play and i still hope they do but like you know i've been called all kinds of names recently about this but i just hope that they do and you know a lot of it is me me huffing the copium and that stuff like oh, come on blizz i've got faith in you but or rather i've got faith in team four i should say maybe not blizzard anymore anyway let's move on so yeah uh, an internal activision blizzard source told dexerto this was incorrect and added that getting the game out as soon as possible was now a high priority we're more than aware we need to get it out, they said. So the word is the dev team has been told to lock in the features the game has and get it fixed and get it shipped. We're looking to get it out before the summer of 2022. I mean, that sounds quite like forceful, doesn't it, that language? Like, get the, get, just get it out. Just whatever you've got, release the game. I mean, we've been asking for Overwatch 2 for ages, so it's rich of me to sit here and go, well... Well, let's make sure. Hold on, hold on. Let's make sure the game's polished and finished before we launch it, right? Because if it was took another year, then it would be like, oh my god, what's going on? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> another source, a member of franchise management, also corroborated this version of events. We've been told that the aim is for Q2 of next year. They informed us, which is quarter two of next year. The timing of the release will factor in the league schedule because obviously they don't want to switch game versions in the middle of a season. On August the 11th, GG Recon reported that the league would go on a, uh, a, a year-long hiatus before Season 5 began. They wrote, according to multiple sources within the Overwatch League, the league office has told teams that the fifth season of Overwatch League is going to be delayed past its usual starting point in the first half of the year. Sources are dating the suggested start date of the league in late summer at the earliest, with its likely starting point being mid-fall. Which, if that's true, lines up with a game coming out right in, in uh, before summer so there's a few months before overwatch league kicks off right which would make sense i think we theorized that anyway based off the stuff gg recon did because remember we covered that uh on a video in the channel uh, they also added that the reason for this was a delayed launch of overwatch's sequel overwatch 2 with the league uh which the league wants to play on next year shortly after publication of the story the overwatch league vice president john speck tweeted it's really not practical to respond to every rumor about our future plans but in this case the story is, is inaccurate we have not set nor communicated dates about our 2022 season yet, but do not plan to take a year-long hiatus in any scenario we are currently considering. So in this, it, it doesn't actually deny that there'll be no Overwatch League yet next year, but what it does deny is there will be no Overwatch esports next year in a way, right? So I think what will happen is we'll just see random tournaments next year. Maybe they'll even be done with third-party providers who, who produce tournaments, but I think it'll be different next year. Um, leading up to whatever the hell happens with Overwatch 2's launch. Or there could just be a series of sort of Overwatch League events that happen every now and again. Um, I don't know. Like, I still think there's there's still scope, really, to use Overwatch League as, like, maybe a place to show off some Overwatch 2 stuff. So that might be something they do to sort of drum up interest again in the League and, and Overwatch 2. I think that could be a viable tactic. Anyway, however, multiple sources that work within the League confirm that this denial wasn't telling the full story and that the denial was mostly made on the basis of semantics 
That denial was a technicality, one internal Activision Blizzard source told us. There is no plan set in stone yet as they are coming up with multiple models to discuss with the owners. What looks most likely at the moment is that we run a few Overwatch League branded events as the run-in to a delayed regular season while Overwatch 2 is tweaked. The hope is that we get Overwatch 2 to at least a playable beta in time for those events. But if we do not, we will run these competitions in the existing game. So he, so this again is kind of like implying that there'll be some sort of beta happening early next year. But surely that would have to have to happen late this year, right? Going into early next year, and then, mm. but it's still you know somewhat good news. Um, we'll run these competitions on the existing game. So while there will still be competitive Overwatch being played, and franchise teams will be competing in those competitions, the actual league component is more than likely to be delayed. So it looks like filler events until the league starts. This was followed up by another report published by Dot Esports on August 11th in response to GG Recon's original story. The report states the Overwatch League is assessing its options for 2022, including a potential extended off-season following the 2021 season and interim events that could include non-season-based tournaments amid the uncertainty of a release calendar for Overwatch 2. What's funny, the source said, is that there is also a strong likelihood that these events are run in partnership with all the third-party op operators we've isolated ourselves from over the first game's life cycle. We're hoping the excitement around Overwatch 2 is significant enough that they're willing to let bygones be bygones. Now that's really interesting. So that goes back to what I just said about these third party operators. And what I mean by that is like ESL and Blast. If you guys watch any esports, you would have heard these names. Now, if they're willing to go, you know what? Let's work with these guys and maybe we can do that for Overwatch 2. It could be a completely different Overwatch League for Overwatch 2. It could be more similar to what you get with Counter-Strike. Um, although I... I'm not sure that would ever happen. I don't think Blizzard would ever want to let go. Like Blizzard are kind of terrible for having like an iron grip on all of their esports. The next ownership meeting is slated to take place on Thursday, September the 2nd, and it is hoped that the plans for the league will be decided upon. However, it won't be as simple as making a decision about dates. There are multiple factors at play, ranging from existing contracts, potential delays in Overwatch 2's development, and further pandemic protocols. We need to make a decision before October because that's when we do player contracts a member of the franchise management explained. Typically, players are on one-year deals that run October to October. If players don't have anything to compete in until the middle of next year, then the thought is, why should we foot the salary bill for a stunted season? Renegotiations are going to have to take all of this into, into account. Given these issues, not all franchises will be too upset at the prospect uh, of the league actually being on hiatus for a year. One franchise manager summed it up by saying, our suggestion will be for the league to pay us uh, a stipend and just wait for a year. It'd give us more time to get things back to normal and for them to do what they need for this lawsuit and for Overwatch 2 to get finished. Until that happens, it just feels like we're burning money for nothing. Well, there we go, guys. So what we've got there is pretty strong leaks. I mean, Dexerto is, is a fairly decent resource, especially when it's these, you know, <laughs> I want to say <laughs> good articles on Dexerto, not just random, like, news posts that they tend to do. This is a, a well-thought-out article. We're going to get Overwatch 2. Um before summer in q2 next year so 2022 is your launch date there should be a beta rolling out before that um, the idea is to have the beta playable before then so teams can actually play on that and play tournaments on the beta which i think could be really cool if that's true then it means that maybe we start seeing the beta in january next year february march and then like we sort of start seeing things kick off with the, the pro players or we see it towards the end of this year i just don't know but yeah that's the best leak we've had so far on Overwatch 2's launch day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a bit of an in-depth look at what's been going on uh, at the moment. What I'm going to say though, guys, is just, just to end this video, is I might be quiet for the next few days. I am uh, going into hospital for some treatment. Again, you guys know I've got Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and all that. I've covered it to death. Well, I'm not covered it. I've spoke about it. Um, but I have to go into hospital and have an infusion done. And it can make me tired for a few days. So I'm kind of just going to chill uh, tomorrow, I think. And then I'm going to go in on the second and get it done and... Uh, just go from there. So I may be quiet for a few days. Uh, I might not be there. I might feel okay and just get back into it again. Well, thank you guys for watching the video and let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below and I will catch you a lovely lot on the next one. Doodaloo.